What's up, Moto Buddies? This is Mike from Taco Moto Co. and Baja Taco Tours, and we're going to do a 360 on a fresh build today. This is a bike that we just completed for a good guy from Washington. This project um, produced a bike that's going to be used on a lot of BDR-type roads, and what's cool is we've got a father and son ride situation again. We, we're really fond of those, and those have come our way a couple of times, and, and we really like doing them. I like the aspect of knowing that a bike's going to be enjoyed both by, you know, the, uh, the dad who probably instilled the love of motorcycles into the, into the, the son. And, and then together they're going to go out and enjoy as adults, these rides, multi-day rides and, um, spend a lot of time together out in the wilderness on bikes. I think that's just a great way to instill, you know, camaraderie and friendship with each other and deepen those relationships. So this one is very cool and very special and has a lot of really tricky little bits on here to make it sort of a, a really high-end ADV bike, a light ADV bike. He's going to throw some soft bags over the top of that, maybe some giant loops or Moscos, and then head out. He'll probably do five, six, seven, eight, eight day, ten day trips on this, as well as using it as a single track bike. And so he wanted something that was usable and suitable for basically everything that you would use a bike for pretty much having like a one size fits all machine you know it's not when you when you build a bike like this you sort of are trying to come at it from cross purposes it's not an an incredibly suitable like single track machine because of the weight and then because of the weight also because it's light it's not sort of the best ultimate adv bike so you're trying to blend these two together and find some you know, middle spot where you can have a machine that'll do both really well. And if you wanted to get at the highest level, you'd have to have two bikes. So this bike right here is that compromise machine. I think it works out really well. And I tell guys all the time, I think the best motorcycle to have for a lot of riders is a 500 KTM EXC with a plate. And that's what we, that was, that's what we based this one on. So we'll start here at the back. We like these Enduro plates, if you've seen these before, when you take a digger, plate moves. As far as the turn signals, they're integrated into that light piece. And so new for 20, this is something that we are going to um, start stocking up on. And you've got brake, run, license plate light, left and right turn signal, all in one small micro housing. Nothing to break off. Super simple, super streamlined. Very nice. Uh, the back tire, we use the IRC MB5. He's going to be in all kinds of terrain, and this is an incredibly aggressive tire. Very good hookup in all sorts of situations. 140 size. This tire tends to be a little bit small. So the 140 is about where other 130s are. That's a big tire, obviously. Uh, he's going to put some weight and cover some miles on here. And we've got Moose in this. We used Warp 9 titanium rim locks. They're aluminum. And then we've counterweighted them. If this was the stock rim lock, we'd have another half ounce on there. But this is, uh, maybe it'd be a one ounce. I think these are one and a half, so it'd be a one. And so we run a little less weight because it's the Warp 9 rim lock. We threw on these little, um, this is like a dome carrier. This is the wheel race, but it's got this little overshield. And so when you're pressure washing your bike, you're not going to get water down in and destroy that bearing. That's a cool little piece to add on there. And then the axle block, which gives you a lot more ticks for adjustability. Uh, we've got the bulletproof caliper guard as well as the shark fin down there. And that replaces the stock caliper slider. It all integrates together. And the only way you can have a caliper guard is if you have the shark fin. And so you need the bottom piece to accommodate the top piece. And they, they integrate together really well. Poly sport on that swing arm guard there. Um, moving up, let's talk about the muffler here. That's the stock muffler with the resonator intact, Pro Motobillet end cap. Makes really good power. Very similar on the dyno and performance wise to FMF or the Acro or some of the other pipes and uh, at a fraction of the cost. That's a $149, $149 end cap and it does a terrific job. As far as suspension goes, completely reworked, resprung, revalved. We put gold valves in there, everything race tech, everything custom to this rider, to his weight, to his particular standards, and um, the shock as well. And that's a bladder conversion in there, and the fork also. So the suspension is completely redone. Uh, we've got the XC Racing, I, I forget what these are called, but these are the dampened foot pegs, and they are beefy, man. They're heavy, they're cool. They're super durable. I don't think, um, I don't think it, it, what's, what's 
the killer app about this is the fact that they've got these little rubber dampening uh, bits in there. And so that will dampen out some of the harshness and vibration come come through that motor. These are kind of famously buzzy engines, even though they're counterbalanced, and that'll help out a lot. And uh, uh, we've got this. Well, this is really trick. I kind of like this. This is a foldable shift lever, or I'm sorry, foot brake lever. He's a bigger guy with a longer foot, and then in case uh, you take a digger, because it's so long, it'll fold up out of the way, and that's a really cool piece. Molecule on the skid plate, Recluse CX on the clutch, and um, E-Line carbon fiber uh, pipe guard. And then notice on here that we've removed the O2 sensor and we've got that blocked off. Kind of hard to see down in there. Since we're running a GET ECU, which ignores the O2 data, uh, there's no sense on having that on there. So we've removed that. And I'd like to see somebody come out with a pipe guard for these 20s, 20 plus bikes that are the O2 bikes without this, you know, I probably could fit the um, SXF pipe guard on there. I haven't tried that. If, if you know if it'll fit, you throw that in the comments. Samco hoses. So notice that we left the thermostat intact. Man, I get questions all the time about guys who want to try these exotic coolants and do all of these weird, um, they have all these strange ideas about how to make their bike run cooler and uh, the secret really is run a good quality oil. Uh, I know guys like to run Rotella, and that's fine. Rotella puts a lot of internal engine resistance. There's a lot of pumping losses from that oil. It also robs horsepower on these small displacement single-cylinder engines. And so uh, I guess the only advantage of Rotella is the fact that it's cheap. However, there are heat gains and then horsepower losses from that particular oil. Use, uh, use a better oil in your engine, get a better clutch. The CX has steel drive plates as well as the frictions, and you get more, two extra of each, and so you're dissipating the heat across a better and uh, larger clutch surface area, and because of the automatic uptake, uh, there's less slippage, and so that dissipates heat better, or it doesn't create heat. So much heat in an engine comes from the clutch. So if you have a better clutch, and you're a better rider too, you could also do that, you just modulate the clutch better and so that will dissipate the heat and then um <clears throat> having the correct fueling so you have proper airflow good exhaust good airflow and then good fueling that will cut down on heat so guys who just keep trying to throw all of these weird thermostat deletes and fancy exotic coolants at their bike uh, they'll notice gains that are negligible we we observe very negligible gains from any of those so we've got the Samco kit on here, and it's a complete OE style. The thermostat is intact. We run thermostats on all our bikes, and we take these bikes down to Mexico. We ride them in Vegas, and you'll you'll overheat a bike no matter what you have done to it if you put it through a, a, enough of a demanding condition where you just overclock the, the capacity of the cooling system to dissipate that heat. So who cares what coolant you have in there and what, what upgrades you've done to the cooling system. If you create enough clutch heat, you're going to, you're going to quickly surpass its ability to dissipate that heat. So we, we don't do any of that. I run thermostats on all our bikes and uh, the thermostat, you need that, that engine, that ECU is tuned in such a way that it's looking for water temps of like 180, 176, give or take, to about 200. That is sort of its optimal tune temperature. And when you remove a thermostat and then you drop below that, you're outside of that range. Now you'll you'll get over that range, um, but that's to be expected. But getting under the range is a little more, produces a few more downsides. So uh, again, just there's a plug for upgrading the hoses for sure. These are silicone. And they'll last the life of the bike. These these hoses will outlive the rider, probably, of this bike. Uh, but they um, we maintain that thermostat on there. So there's there's my piece about that. Nice big 3.9 Acherbys gas tank. Um, so a lot of guys don't like the hump. I'm kind of neutral on it. It does, you know, come up really high. IMS has yet to come out with their big tank for the KTMs. They should, this, I'm filming this right now in the summer of 2020, so later on this year, I know they're going to be coming out with that, and if you're not fond of the Acherbys, the IMS is on its way as far as the big tank, and then the really big one where the side scoops are the gas, that uh, yet to be determined. I'm not sure when that's coming out from any of the manufacturers. Um, so up here on the suspension again, 
completely resprung, revalved, gold valves. We put the emulators in there. So this this um, WP48, the uh, X Exact or Explorer, I forget what they call it now, that's been completely converted over. So instead of having an independent um, rebound and um, compression, now both tops are the rebound and both bottoms are compression, just like in the old days. So unfortunately, you got to do a lot of work and spend some money to convert these forks back to what they used to be, like in the uh, uh, the pre-16 days. Those were sort of the glory days of the WP open chamber forks. And that's what we've done here is we've basically gone back in time and converted it back to that exact setup. And it works incredibly well. Super plush, super nice, very responsive. It's a great setup. Uh, the uh, free flow, the little gas gas vent here, because we have desmogged this bike, so we're no longer, no longer sending... Um, the vapors through that charcoal system. We're now using a one-way check valve system. And then in the place where the canister used to be, the charcoal canister used to be, we've used the KTM Hard Parts Radiator Coolant Overflow Conversion Kit. So if you're familiar on your bike, you have a black hose here that comes from the fuel tank. Now we have coolant overflow. So on this side, if you've never seen one of these, it's plugged. And then way down here on the bottom, I don't think we're going to be able to see it. It is right here. So this line is the bottom of the coolant reservoir. So coolant overflow coolant from the radiator goes in the top. And then this is the return back. This is like the suck back, the pullback um, for that system. And so to get that out, to get the charcoal system out, you drop the header out. And then it slides, the charcoal canister slides down. It hits the motor. But because it's plastic and it's somewhat flexible, you can just get a pry bar and bend it and pull, bend and pull. You don't have to cut it or do anything really weird to get it out. And um, you, then in its place, you install that, that KTM Hard Parts coolant hose bottle. And it gives you, I don't know, four or so ounces of spare capacity of coolant. Uh, going back up, let's let's come back over to this side here. Looking up here at the controls, OD Rouge grips, super nice, super plush, and they come with the cams, just like stock. Um, I will make a point of pointing out the fact that we have the Pro Taper Evo handlebars, which uh, in this particular one, we're using the Woods High Bend, which is a nice sweep and a nice rise. And these are fairly flexible bars. If you're gonna go with a twin wall bar, this is probably one of the more flexible, compliant ones. And the, the thing I would mention is it's knurled on the end. Oh, I have some over here, so let's take a quick look. So this knurling right here, when you try to slide those OD bar or OD grips over that, the, the, the this just raises that diameter. So it's the, the the wall is thicker here than it is on this side. And so you're what what we typically have to do is and I've done a couple of things. I've taken a belt sander and I've sand off some of these knurls, but also you can take like a round file. And you can work a little bit on the inside edge. See this this aluminum lip here? That's part of the system, the grab system, the securing system. You can work that a little bit with a file and then get that over the knurling. And then what we do, we just tap it on with a rubber mallet. And once they're on, they're pretty much on. To change these grips, we're probably going to have to jackhammer them off. And then you just tighten the little nut on the bottom. So there's a little bit of extra work when you use these and the Evo bars, but I think it's worth it because these are great grips and these are great bars. We got rid of the stock multifunction switch, threw on the sick ass. That gives us a smaller perch that's just smaller. The dimensions are smaller. Also gives us an off. The stock does not let you turn the lights completely off. And we use, the as far as the mirror goes, this is the... Um, Scrambler from Double Take, nice mirror. And the thing that is unique about this is it's a short arm rather than the standard round mirror, which has a very long one. It's probably, I don't know, it's not a foot, but it seems like it's super long, maybe eight, nine, 10 inches. And this one's just really short, stubby, so it keeps the mirror down lower and you can ride faster before the mirror starts to come back on you. That other mirror is like, a, I don't know, 60 miles an hour, it starts to fold. I've had these up to 100 and it keeps, keeps that, that uh, angle really well. Get uh, traction control. Well, that's not traction. That's the map switch. So we're running the Get ECU system. Over here is the traction control knob and then the stock on and off switch. As far as the levers, we're using bulletproof designs. 
uh, they have a really cool new lever system. And it's, it's like a lot of the other guys. It's kind of the unbreakable concept where it folds forward. And they're cool. We like it. It's, it's got a nice feel to your hand. Um, nothing wrong with those. And then as far as the bar guards, we're using the Reflex Racing. And we're using the Recurve mount system. And so that integrates into the top bar clamp. And so very secure and stable. And then sitting on top of that, we have the Moto Minded Stout mount, and on top of that is the Wedge and the Voyager Pro. And all of that's integrated into the, the bike. We're looking at coolant temperature and then volts. As far as powering, we T-tap the power for this system off of the um, stock uh, Speedo. And so when the Speedo gets power, the Voyager Pro gets power. So they're powered together on the same circuit at the same time. Uh, and then just got some fork bleeders here. Point those out. Keys in the same exact spot. We're using the Moto Minded V2. This is, you know, I, I'm not sure what they exactly call this mounting system, but there's a plate behind here, and the wiring is zip tied to that. And then now we have a rigid mounting system where the light and the mask mount to this bracket affair and that gives us a rigid non-rubber band mount and it's not only more secure but better wire management behind the headlight and that's very cool we just threw the uh, um what is this this is the seal doctor but who makes that risk racing yeah risk racing fork seal cleaner wiper there and those guards radiator guards are trail tech and they're nice we like those on the older bikes that have the coolant hose that comes down out of the bottom it's kind of vulnerable there is a little slot here where you can put an accessory tab it's a little extender and it will prevent sticks and rocks from hitting that and cutting that hose that is a somewhat common issue on the uh, six on the 17 through 19 bikes the vulnerability of the radiator hose there and that solves it uh, over here, SKF fork seal wipers. And then down here, we throw on an enduro engineering axle puller. Those are the, uh, as far as the bottom of the fork shoe guards, these are the TM Design Works fork shoe protectors. If you're going to be in rocky situations, you'll get a lot of dings and hits down here. And then since we upgraded the forks and we now have the compression adjusters on the bottom, we, we wanted to make sure we didn't damage those with some rocks. So there is a little hole drilled into the bottom of that so you can get your screwdriver to change your compression if you need to. Uh, Moose, again, we're running Michelin. I am very fond of Michelin. There's other brands out there. There's lots of cool, tricky mooses, and I just keep going back to Michelin for the cost, durability, the life cycle duration of them is fantastic. The feel is excellent. I have, I have only good experiences with the Michelin Moose. And then as far as the tire goes, up here is Shinko 216. The MX, this is a great tire. You see this, very popular. This is the um, uh, this is the fatty one. So this is the 9100. That's, that's a bigger tire. And our rider is going to be loading up this bike and riding fast. So we wanted to make sure we protect the rim and give him a soft, plush ride. He's not railing the corners. One, the, one of the critiques that guys will have on this particular tire, because it's tall and wide, it, it has, of course, that tendency to fold and roll. And if you are really pushing it, lean in the corners, it will do that on you and you could pump it up to 25 psi to overcome that we're running moose on this bike but since we are not riding aggressively on this on this bike um, what we're looking more for is comfort and um, you know just uh, energy conservation as far as the rider goes protecting the rider and so this tire is exactly what we wanted to accomplish that um we upgraded the headlight, XL80. That's the motor minded bracket. We love that, use it all the time. And then on the turn signals on the front, we're using the Takamoto fork wrap turn signal. Those, those are LEDs. They wrap around the fork, they snap on, really cool. And they're wired for running light features. So when the bike is on, you've got those glowing as running lights, auxiliary running lights. On this side, uh, grip donuts. I think we kind of covered it. Maybe we'll talk about the stabilizer. We've got the BRP stabilizer mount with the Scots, and then we've got the cable guide and the large knob. So we threw all the little goodies at that, all those accessories that you can get. Um, looking for anything on this side. Let's drop down here, Recluse. This is the slave cylinder and that's fully adjustable. And as you know, you can default that if you need to, to bump start your bike. And you just turn that out until the black, well, you turn it out until there's no more friction 
on the knob on the dial there on this that you turn this and you would do well to count the number of clicks there's a little there's a little machine notch in there and they give you these notches here so if you ever had a situation where you needed to bump start your bike you can defeat that and turn it off basically turn the recluse off now your manual clutch and then when your bike is started if you wanted to bring it back you just count backwards the number of turns typically three four five something like that and then bring it back something cool that uh, recluse is doing recently on the new cx is they they cross drill uh, pretty racy they cross drill out the bolt here and they machine it down so that's just got like a works look to it nobody's going to safety wire that that would be ridiculous but it's a very cool trick feature and uh, look to it. Recluse stuff always looks amazing. Dirt Tricks Dome Washer. Um, these are prone to leak. The stock dome washer is terrible. The uh, metallurgy is awful, and so we swapped that out. And we're running the stock front sprocket, so that's a 14, and it's a good quality. And we cut away all the rubber dampening. So your stock washer, uh, your stock if you if you have these these bikes these exc plated bikes or the fe's you'll notice even on the even on the xcfw's and uh the fe so not the fes but the fe they all have a rubber uh they've just been impregnated with like a rubber I'm, what, what's the word I'm trying to say? Just sort of like a rubber dampener, and it's a sound dampener. And so the, as the chain rolls over the sprocket, basically the rubber kind of sticks out and the chain contacts that rubber. And so instead of having the chain sort of walk in the sprocket like this, it sort of uh, locates it and then it cuts down in sound. And that's what that's for. And we took that off because this dome washer is bigger has a bigger diameter than this stock one and so we needed the space so we cut all that off the dampening is actually kind of a good idea and i would leave that on if i could have but we needed the space so we cut that off and then another thing that happens on the stock bikes is the chain sliders are made of a soft material uh, the, they are aggress they wear aggressively and they're soft again for sound dampening and, and we don't care about this on this particular project so we want durability and longevity so the tm design chain slider is much much harder and more durable than the stock it'll last three four times longer and so um we threw that on there also notice the vent hose so we are venting the crankcase just down like on the motocross bikes and that keeps the crankcase oil vapors out of the air intake and will over time reduce uh, the potential for a piston crown buildup in deposits uh, because this bike's gonna be ridden at higher speeds and um, for longer duration, there'll be quite a bit of crankcase uh, vapor buildup. And so venting that will potentially create a, a cleaner piston crown over time. And then you're looking at uh, the CPC metal fuel tank connector. And then we have the metal 90 on the bottom of the tank instead of the plastic one for stock. And so we're metal, metal, metal. Everything in there is metal for durability. And then the Golon fuel filter. And the Golon's a cool upgrade because it's a nice filter and it's got a lot of surface area. And it has two O-rings. If you've ever had an O-ring fail at that connection point, if you got two of them and then this metal connector, this is about it. This is as reliable and durable as you're going to get. There's that's it right here. The Golon double O-ring and then the metal CPC. This is that's that's the that's it. That's the shiznit. And then as far as the connection back here, we had to cut. When you do something like this with an aftermarket tank, you're going to need to get creative with your with your hoses. So we had to take the stock hose, trim it down. We maintain the 90 and then we had to use just a little short piece of straight hose to connect there. So often when you throw in these accessories like this in aftermarket tanks, you need to get creative and imaginative with how you're going to run those hoses because the stock setups no longer fit. Everything is now we just have more. We've got more going on. Everything is the, the, the distances like this, the, the thickness of that needed to be accounted for. And then this is a little bit longer than the stock piece, I think. And the tank, now the fuel pickup sits lower th than where it did on the stock one. So you um, you need to either do that or have somebody do that for you and account for all that. Um, we noticed that there's nothing here where the smog system used to be. And since uh, the GET ECU isn't 
looking for that signal, we just took that harness and, and stuck it up in here. That was the, the old plug for the vapor recovery solenoid, which is gone. And then back here, we're using a TM chain slider in the rear, and that's a lot more durable than the stock one was. And then a bulletproof, that, that right there protects the drop down for that. And these two aluminum tangs are prone to be kicked or knocked off with rocks. Uh, dirt tricks on the rear sprocket. I think we have a 49, so run a 1449, which is a pretty good all-around gearing um, for for the use of this bike. And, and I run that on mine anyway, 1449, and like it and use it uh, for all kinds of situations and settings. And then the Warp 9 titanium bolts that just look really cool. That's just bling, pure bling only. Up here we have the uh, a Cherubis vented airbox cover and then inside there you can't see it so we're running this straight air air boot that is the european version of the air boot that did not have the reeds in it and then behind that we have the twin air screenless works version air filter bracket and then their flame proof air filter and then over the top of that is a pc racing uh, filter skin and under that is a PC racing filter base gasket so we don't grease the filter anymore it's not necessary so there's a lot going on in that airbox by way of upgrades and then lastly you one more you cannot see it is the um, inside there is the twin air throttle body upgrade kit and that takes out the stock Throttle body shaft, so the butterfly shaft and the butterfly plate are upgraded with much considerably thinner by like half so that when you're at uh, higher throttle angles, you present much less blockage surface area to be blocked by the air. So it just increases airflow through the throttle body. And that that's all crammed in there. You can't see any of that unless I took all that apart. Let's pop the seat here for a second. We've got the anti-gravity eight cell. That's a 240 cold cranking amp battery that's that is straight up the strongest battery that you can put in this in this battery box and what's astonishing is for that much power there's car batteries that that don't have the same sort of ccas that this thing does and then what's even more astonishing is the weight and size and it's difficult to see but there is a half inch gap where i had to stick some foam in there because the battery is is smaller than the allowed space of the box and that's just mind-blowing how much juice is in that battery and that's a very very great uh very good battery we, we like that one a lot these leads that you see here go down into the air box tucked up in here so a couple of things up in here i've got the wi-fi module for the get ecu and then the auxiliary outputs for a relay system so that when you are engine running the uh, this auxiliary relay is energized and gives you powered output for any ex accessories like heated grips or other GPS items, things he might want to do later on. And so he's got switched power uh, to do that. And then you've got the get ECU and we've got the map switch plugged in and then the traction control knob as well. And all that's being run right there under the seat. And then just a little pro tip, if you have the get ECU, put, take a label maker and put your, put your Wi-Fi passcode on there if you lose uh you know if you lose connection or your phone forgets the wi-fi you've got the module number there and you don't have to dig under that side panel to get back access to it so that probably is everything i may i may have forgotten a few things and i'll put those in the comments the warp 9 kickstand the mx length you know what's cool about warp 9 is they make a supermoto stand and a standard size stand i don't know of anybody else who makes a uh, factory supermoto size stand. So we like those guys. So this is a great bike. If you have any questions on it or want to contact us to get one like this set up for yourself, we're happy to have you call us or email us or send us a message on any of the socials. Uh, we try to stay active in Facebook groups and other areas, getting, um, getting as much help out there as we can. We answer questions. You're more than welcome to call us if you have uh, problems with your bike or you need uh, somebody to hold your hand and walk you through some situation that you're dealing with. We we do as much as we can to try to answer those questions when we get them. So thank you for watching and for sure go out and get some adventure.